Okay, so today we'll be talking about the nervous system and um, what are some of the key things uh, that we need to take note is three main segments, which is sensitivity, the structure of the human nervous system, and how do we actually process information. So when we talk about sensitivity, right, we are talking about the organism's ability to be able to first detect the change, response to the change. And depending on how fast or its ability to be able to detect and respond to this change is what we call sensitivity. The faster you are able to respond to the change through the detection, it will be the higher the sensitivity as compared to an organism that doesn't really respond to it fast enough. Okay? So in your nervous system, you realize that the detection comes in in the form of stimulus and the response comes in through uh, action. An action in the form of like either you run or something like that. So some of the typical responses to a stimuli, okay, singular would be stimulus, would be you when you touch a hot object, you feel pain. So what will happen is the, the, the action that you will follow is your hand being actually redrawn or removed from the point of contact. Plants will also grow towards light where light is the stimulus. And the action of the plant growing towards the light is the response. Bacteria move towards food sources. So the food source is the stimulus where the bacteria will be able to sense and then it will move towards it. So that's the response that the bacteria will get. So the main role of the nervous system is that it allows organisms to detect change in their surrounding and respond to it. This will help to enable the coordination of the different parts of the body Coordination meaning that you have one central place being able to uh, move different parts of the body to enact a similar function. Okay, so when we talk about this response or this action, right, there's two main types. One that is voluntary and the other that is involuntary. I mean, sorry, the other way around. So one that is involuntary and the other is voluntary. So when we talk about involuntary, it's mainly an action that you can't control. It is done naturally through your body in the sense that it is not controlled consciously by your brain. Whereas voluntary are basically actions that are actually controlled uh, consciously through your brain. For example, um, you actually clapping your hands is a, is a voluntary action because you are able to control when to clap, when not to clap. However, involuntary actions are, for example, the beating of your heart. You can't really control the, the heart from not beating and beating. This is a natural reaction. The other example is like grieving. So examples are like this where uh, the ones in yellow are involuntary action. Digestion is an example where your food in the stomach gets churned. This is also an involuntary action. Um, whereas, let's say, throwing a ball, waking up in the morning, doing your homework, all these are voluntary action because consciously you can actually control it. Next, we move to the human nervous system. So for the human nervous system, you will be, you, it's important to understand the different structures of the nerves, as, uh, which we call actually neurons, and at the same time, how the different parts of the central nervous and the peripheral nervous system. So there is two main components in the human nervous system. You have the central nervous system. The central nervous system is generally made up of the center part of the body. And what is located in the center part is number one, your brain. And the second one is your spinal cord. So they, these two alone actually co comprise of the central nervous system. The peripheral system, nervous system are the branches of the neurons that actually come up away from the central nervous system. So this can be your cranial nerves. Cranial comes from the word the brain and the spinal nerves that comes from the spine. Okay, your nervous tissues are the other kind of um, uh, specialized cells, uh, which we call it as the neurons. So the neurons, there's three main type in your uh, syllabus. You have your sensory neuron, your motor neuron, as well as your relay neuron. Uh, try not to use the word intermediate because a lot of students tend to have spelling mistakes here as it's quite long. So relay neurons would be good. Do not write relaying neuron. It's not a sports event. So it's a relay neuron. 
Okay, so how these three different neurons are work is number one, the sensory neuron generally transmit impulses, electrical impulses are the signals that are being um, sent over through the neuron to pass on the messages so that your brain could actually detect as well as to evaluate what kind of response you will need. So the sensory neuron will transmit impulses from the sense organ and in the sense organ, you have these specialized cells called the receptors to be able to detect the stimulus to the central nervous system. The motor neuron will then transmit impulses from the central nervous system to the effector. Effector is the name that we give to like your muscles, your glands, okay, that will be able to exhibit some form of response through contraction or relaxation. Then lastly, we have the relay that transmit impulses from the sensory to motor neuron in the central nervous system. Your relay neuron tends to actually be located in your central nervous system. Some basic structures of the neuron. A neuron would have a cell body, an axon, and a dendron. So these three are the components of a neuron. So when we look at the cell body, right, we will first look at where the cell body is. The cell body is the one that has the nucleus. So over here, it's over here. Over at this sensory neuron, it's over here. The axon and the dendron is actually dif um, differentiated as to where the electrical signals are moving towards to. If the electrical signals are moving towards to the cell body, we call them as a dendron. The axon are the electrical impulses traveling away from the cell body. So uh, how I remember it is AX, so it's like exiting. Whereas dendron is like moving into the cell body. So just now we talked about the three relaying, uh, the three neurons. We will see that we have the sensory neuron, which is number one here. We have the relay neuron, which is the number two which is located, this one. And then finally, we have the motor neuron, which is the number three. So what happens over here, right, is that for the sensory neuron, it's tentatively connected to the receptor, and the receptor is usually your sense organ. So that's where they will first detect all the changes. And one thing to take note is that from the sensory neuron, right, from the receptor to the relay neuron, right? It's not connected by only one sensory neuron. Generally, there is multiple neurons, uh, multiple sensory neurons that will be actually located in order to detect all the way uh, to the relay neuron. So uh, this is one common mistake that a lot of students thought about uh, that we have one general long sensory neuron and for the others as well. So imagine this, if let's say you get cut here, you have you just have a paper cut and it cuts your nerve. La. If there's only one, right, that would actually mean that your whole body cannot even move. Because you are, I wouldn't say cannot move, but cannot sense anything. You won't detect any pain. So that is the danger of if you have one continuous neuron. However, you will later on see that the structure of the neuron is consists of many different neurons coming together to form your nerve tissue. So the structure of the motor neuron is where you have your, your cell body located at the side or the end of the neuron. And what we can see is the location. So the one in blue is actually known as your dendrons and these are your nerve fibers that will transmit impulses towards the cell body. Whereas for the dendrites, the dendrites are the one in red. Okay, it's usually at the end layer here. And these are the ones that receive the impulses from the other neuron. It, the dendrites on the axon will then transmit the information to the effector, which is your muscles. And just now what we saw is that the cell body is actually located at the end. This would mean that the, the length of the axon, which is this whole part here, is very long as compared to the dendrons, which are very short as compared to just now the sensory neuron. Okay, Another thing to note is that the node of Ranvier's are region where the money sheet is actually absent and they tend to speed up the transmission by allowing impulses to jump from one node to another node. However, the Marling sheet, right, which is the one in yellow, is actually this layer of fatty substances that helps to shield and insulate the nerve fibers. 
So this is generally surrounded by a thin membrane known as the neural lima. So what happens is the we having this fatty layer around the 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 whole nerve endings, right? Would then minimize electrical signals to be lost to the surrounding. So this will actually ensure that the electrical signal will be passed on directly to the motor end plate, which is the end junction between the dendrites and the muscle fibers. For the sensory neuron, the sensory neuron would transmit nerve impulses from the sensory organs to the central nervous system. And in this case, you could see one vast difference is the location of where the cell body is, as well as how short the axons are and the dendron. In exam, you might be even required asked to actually draw the arrow of the direction of the electrical impulses in which it must come in from the dendron and move out from the axon. So one main co so the main comparison between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron is number one, the length of the fibers where the dendrons are long, the axons are short. Whereas, whereas for the motor neuron, it's the other way around where the dendrons are short, the axons are long. And this is mainly due to the position of where the cell bodies are at. The function of the sensory neuron is mainly conducting the impulses from your receptors of, from, of the sense organ to the central nervous system. Whereas for a motor neuron is to conduct impulses from the central nervous system to your effector, which is your uh, muscles. Now, as we actually move different uh, neurons, involve different neurons in the form of transmission, and we also know that they do not connect directly or touching each other. So how then are the electrical signals able to be able to jump? So this is where the junction between two electrical neurons are what we call the synapse. If we look over here closely, we could see that these blue colors each represents one neuron, and the space in between them are the synapse. And what, we can under and what we understand is from the neurons, right, they actually conduct the impulses through electrical signals. Whereas through the synapse, it's actually through chemical means. Chemical means would actually be like your uh, hormones, or I wouldn't say hormones, about your ions. And in a way, these chemical means, we actually use the word neurotransmitter, in which they actually are able to form the different particles or ions. Once they have detected the electrical signals and then re- convert it back to electrical signals to the next neuron. So what are nerves then? So what we saw is that the neuron is basically we have diff three different types of cells. So a nerve is a bundle of nerve fibers enclosed in this sheet of connective tissues and that these nerves will then slowly emerge from the brain are what we call the cranial nerve. So the word cranial generally refers to the brain. And the spinal cord is usually uh, being actually formed by our spinal nerves. So the spinal nerves contains a mixed fibers that they can be made up of the sensory and motor nerve fibers. The spinal cord is also encased in the vertebral column and this spinal cord will then emerge from the vertical columns. As of now, there is actually 31 pairs of spinal nerves and they each emerge at intervals along the length of the spinal cord. Over here, we will also see that the brain and the spinal cord will consist of two distinct regions, which we actually co cover this as the grey matter and white matter. Why, um, when we actually do a, a real dissection, we realize that there is two different colorations, where the grey matter tends to be darker, the white matter tends to be lighter. So, why is then this main difference? In the grey matter, usually it consists of the cell bodies. <coughs> it consists of the cell bodies of neuron. Um, on the other hand, it is generally located on the outer layer of the brain, which is here, and on the inner layer, which looks like the H of the spinal cord. So. Imagine your spinal cord, you are one person, and let's say we remove that spinal cord. How it will look like is, you imagine yourself lying down, and we actually cut your body in this case. This is how we are actually looking at of the spinal cord. That's similar to this particular diagram. Okay, the white matter on the other hand is mainly made out of nerve fibers of neuron, 
and it's actually the opposite. So it's the central part of the brain and the outer layer of the spinal cord. The gray matter of the spinal cord generally is shaped in a head shape at the spinal cord here, whereas a narrow central canal consisting of the cerebral spinal fluid will run in the middle of the spinal cord. And it's located right in the middle here. Each spinal nerve divides into two roots, the dorsal root and the ventricle root, before it joins the spinal cord. So when we talk about dorsal root and ventricle root, what we refer to is the location. So this is one, this is the other one. So the dorsal root is generally the top part of the spinal cord. The ventral root is actually the bottom. Now, why is this main difference? The dorsal root will contain only the sensory neuron and the cell's body are generally located uh, in this bump over here, which we actually call it the dorsal root ganglion. Okay, so it only contains the cell body of the sensory neuron. On the other hand, the ventral roots will only contain the motor neuron as and no sensory neuron. In between here, located would be your spinal cord location and in this case, you will actually contain your relay neurons. So the gray matter will contain mainly the cell bodies of a motor and relay neuron. So this is one whole cycle where the electrical signal will be detected from the sense organ, move up here through the sensory neuron, moving to the spinal cord and later on, moving out through the vertebral uh, ventral root, which is the motor neuron, and then slowly to the effector. So the spinal nerve will contain the nerve fibers from the dorsal root as well as the ventral root before it subdivides again to supply nerve fibers to the various parts of the body. So generally, once it goes to the, once information goes to the spinal cord, you'll reach to the brain very fast for this, uh, for understanding what sort of response required and set to the respective neuron. The relay neuron will lie within the gray matter of the spinal cord and this relay neuron will transmit nerve impulses from sensory neuron to the brain, the brain to the motor neuron and finally, it can also transmit information from sensory neuron to motor neuron. All this really depends on whether is it a voluntary or involuntary action. The relay neuron will form synapses with the sensory neuron and motor neuron. So how does the nervous system process information? This is important, usually comes up for exam in terms of the steps. So first, information is gathered by the receptors. This information is then converted into electrical signals, which we call nervous impulses. These nervous impulses are transmitted by the peripheral nerves to the central nervous system. So in this case, it's still what we call the sensory neuron. To the central nervous system, generally, it will be the relay neuron. The brain will process the information based on the pattern of the nerve endings and this and the brain will then send impulses to the effector via the motor neuron. Effectors here is actually your muscles. And then this will cause an intended action to be carried out which is your response. So information is gathered by the receptor. This is generally another word for it for the stimuli or stimulus. Okay. And later on, we'll be talking about how does nervous impulses process information. Thank you.